Namaskar and a very pleasant warm good afternoon to all of you. Warm greetings to you from Delhi Developing Library Network, New Delhi. It's a profound privilege and honor for us to have each one of you with us today at the Delhi webinar, which is on libraries and research services, the emerging opportunities, which is shortly going to be delivered by Dr. Sanjay Kataria, the university librarian at Bennett University, Greater Noida. It's a profound privilege and honor for us to firstly welcome uh, Dr. Sanjay Kantariji and would, we would like to thank him for acceding our request uh, uh, you know, in sharing his vast expertise with us today on this platform uh, and especially at this uh, Delnet's uh, monthly webinar session. He is there with us and uh, would be there uh, in, in a short while you know, also uh, sharing his video screen with each one of us. Uh, we take immense pleasure in welcoming our distinguished speaker. I also take immense pleasure in welcoming uh, the eminent librarians, the library and information science professionals, the HODs, the faculty members, researchers and scholars and students uh, who have joined us from different nooks and parts, not only from India, but also from many other countries. It's, it's indeed always uh, quite encouraging and motivating for Telnet to organize these webinar sessions. And today's webinar is indeed uh, one uh, in its series of the monthly webinar series that we do. We remain much uh, grateful to each one of you and also to many of our professional colleagues uh, who always uh, uh, give such an overwhelming uh, response uh, to the Delnet webinars and that always inspires us to keep on coming back uh, to each one of you and announcing our webinar program. So this is our Delnet's continuous endeavor and initiative uh, in order to ensure that we remain in a uh, highly knowledge enriching uh, ecosystem. Thank you so very much for being there with us uh, this afternoon. I also would like to acknowledge uh, my the presence of our own colleagues right from here, from the New Delhi office, and also from our other offices, including at Bangalore, Pune, and Hyderabad. It's indeed a pleasure uh, to be there. Uh, we have uh, today with us a very distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Sanjay Katariaji, who is going to speak on libraries and research services, the emerging opportunities, a person of his stature, doesn't really require much uh, formal introduction, but still I would make a very humble attempt in uh, introducing uh, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Kataria. Uh, it's a profound privilege uh, in uh, letting you all know that Dr. Kataria has more than two decades of rich and fulfilling work experience, and he's presently working as a professor and university librarian at Bennett University, the Times of India Group, and one of the most reckoned universities uh, in the country. Uh, Dr. Kataria also served as a founding librarian uh, of uh, British School of Management in Mumbai at JP Institute of Information Technology, the Deemed University at Noida, and university librarian at Banas Thali University in Rajasthan. Dr. Kataria has contributed about 40 research papers in reputed journals, international conferences, and has also written and edited nine books, conference proceedings. Dr. Kataria is on the board of several prestigious national and international journals and as an editor and member editorial board. He has guided and supervised four PhD scholars and many master dissertations. He has also been invited by several institutes in India and abroad to deliver keynote addresses and has delivered invited talks. He conceptualized ECLIS, an international symposium on emerging trends and technologies in libraries, an international platform for sharing global best practices of librarianship, which was held for the first time in 2008 and consecutively in 2010, 2012, 2015, and 2018. Recently, Dr. Kataria has also organized a lake, the Carnival of Books 2K23 uh, at Vanity University, where renowned authors share their rich experience in the form of the book talks. He is also the recipient of several international fellowships and awards, including a Commonwealth Professional Fellowship in 2012 at Middlesex University in London and 2017 at the University of East London, UK, and Marapan Memorial National Best Young Librarian Award in 2009, bestowed with the Satkal Young Librarian Award in 2012, University Librarian of the Year 2019 by Madhya Pradesh Library Association, Best Librarian Award for 2019 by Society for Promotion of Libraries, Uttar Pradesh, and many more awards and recognitions to his um, credit that he has. Dr. Kataria is also 
introduced a unique concept for promoting library resources, services, and facilities among the scholarly community through quizzes, uh, learning games, workshops, and seminars. The program LiQuest 2019 was organized at Bennett University with the theme Connect, Content, Collaborate, and it was well organized and appreciated by the participants. I'm also very pleased uh, to inform you that Dr. Katari has also completed a one week executive program on Leadership Institute for Academic Librarians at Harvard Graduate School of Education at Harvard University in Boston, USA. Is also key, always keen to adopt the best practices of the world's top ranked institutions like Harvard University or MIT. And he has traveled widely for academic and professional assignments to the various countries, including in USA, UK, Croatia, Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and France. And lastly, I would like to mention that Dr. Sanjay Kataria has been a great supporter of Delnet right from the very inception, for, for which we remain indeed much uh, grateful to him. So it's a profound privilege and honor for me now to once again to welcome Dr. Sanjay Kataria Ji and once again to thank you Sanjay for always being so supportive and cordial and for extending this timeless support, relentless support to us. We cannot really thank you enough and it, it is such a great honor and pleasure to have such a wonderful colleague you know around who is always always just a phone call away and it's a profound honor to have you today with us and we really look forward you know to really having you are the best person who is really demonstrating you know so widely the best practices and you have got an international exposure and international contributions that you're making i don't want to stand between you and our uh, uh, you know attendees who are really looking forward you know to hearing now from you May I have a pleasure of requesting you to start the deliberations of today's webinar. It's over to you, Sanjay, requesting you to kindly unmute yourself. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, the Director Delnet, for your kind invitation and opportunity. So uh, uh, you rightly said I'm associated with the, uh, Delnet since uh, early stages of my career. And Delnet, I learned a lot of things from Delnet. We still, this is a great time for me to remember our mentor, guide, Dr. S.K. Cole. And this is a dream institution for Dr. S. Late Dr. S.K. Kolji. And then how he started Delnet from IIC in a small room. And one known as Delhi, Delhi Library Network. And later on, it's expanded the developing library network. So, uh, it's a really great and unique institution in this country and not in the country, but globally. More important is that the way Dr. Sangeeta and her team, you're taking care of, you know, taking this Delnet is a dream of Dr. S. K. Cole and making, made it more real, realistic, more, you know, impactful in their fraternity and connecting libraries and librarians across the world. So much uh, initiative has been taken by Delnet. And I think that this is only a real time kind of library network supporting libraries practically, especially the document delivery services is very impactful, probably. And I, I'm, I'm sure that most of uh, member libraries benefited of this service. service. So that I'm appreciating this kind of efforts and, uh, you know, deliberation from the uh, Delnet. And we are proud to be part of the Delnet. And we all together should have this organization and we all together have to take this organization further to develop in uh, to take a new height and more informative and meaningful services and collaboration i'm told dr sangeeta more than thousand uh, library professional from across the world have joined this session so thank you very much for taking your your interest and listening to this particular unique area. Though libraries always been and playing a very crucial role in supporting academic and research since inception. This is not very new. But if you look at the trained traditional libraries and that if you look way back, that earlier the user used to come to the library. They used to come to library 
just to collect and ref for the reference of the books and journals and libraries team used to you know help them to find out that particular resource and facilitate them and earlier library fortunately were more engaged with some kind of other clerical or technical work including acquisition technical processing classification that cataloging and all but now time has changed this information technology as how they emerged evolved in that whole sphere of life including libraries and they changed the ways and means of the libraries libraries no more the silence silent and you know say quiet zone is kind of happening place nowadays library the space is more utilized for the collaborative learning peer learning the topic of today discussion is the research support services in this present context is having a different kind of reason we need to initiate other kind of research support services in our libraries particularly what i told you that earlier how the user used to come now your library is going to user to facilitate them now forms and format of library resources has been changed over the period of time users are able to get access of all your library resources from their home their hostel their their cabin then again there is a major challenge why they should come to the library when their everything is available and accessible at their doorstep if you look at the recent past our experiences especially during covid 19 it was not day or two or month or so it was a two years more than two years whole education system you know was in online and libraries how we librarian you know sustained and supported our community from our home and there is only medium was the internet connectivity and how we just connected our community through phones emails or that zoom calls and made our library resources available and accessible at the doorstep of the user through remote access now that particular trend has given a new thinking especially in higher education in private uh, private sector the owner and promoter thinking when that last two year we survive and sustain the library you know why the library is required a kind of use space in the campus why library is required a kind of infra uh, a lot of infrastructures physical infrastructure in the libraries why they need in a kind of use library teams in the library so there was a lot of questions raised and and a librarian especially private sector has to justify each and everything we have to justify our space why we want space we have to justify our budget we want why we want your budget when and even there, there is a perception of a few people that they really don't want in libraries nowadays library is can be kind of one small cabin and person is able to manage and provide the access to the resources this is more than enough so once so many thing has emerged in this particular field certainly we librarian again has a brainstormed had an you know had an exercise discussion and we have to find an ways and means how library can be more meaningful more important for that academic research so there was this kind of thing was there and slowly gradually in if you look at in last last one one day the most of libraries the scenario has been changed now library is more happening than a silent place library is more collaborative is more than a kind of individual uh, isolation place library is, is library is become a partner of academic and research now so so many things has changed over the period of time so today i'm not going to discuss about the conceptual theoretically what exactly the research support everyone is aware about there's a there's a kind of services if you look at the what is research support research support is everything kind of every activities of that which support a researcher to conclude the research to get published the research but 
we are really, really privileged. We are fortunate. We are in this IT era. We are leading and living this IT day to day. We are well connected with the community through our different social social medias. So this is a very high time to utilize all these technique technologies and make the library more meaningful, more resourceful, and is an is the essential part of the academic and research. Is more important. So I will give, I'm going to share my own experiences in last 20 years, how libraries emerged a resource support center. Library is not limiting to providing access to the resources, but library is working along with the scholar community, working with the teachers who are going to classroom. We are here to integrate all library resources with the teaching curriculum. We have need to map the resources and make a library portal where user is not even required to find and search information from different sources. They are not supposed to. Libraries, users, students, faculty, scholars, more time is more important. We have to save their time and energy. We have to facilitate and you know provide the kind of support to them so that they can save their valuable time. They should not waste their time in hunky hanky panky work. They can more concentrate on their adject and meaningful work. They can deliver more meaningful. So I'm now, now going to share my screen. I'm going to share how we at Bennett University became a part of the research community. How Bennett University Library team became a, not only part in providing a support to research, but we involved ourselves. We are equally publishing the way other schools are publishing. We are not only publishing public research paper, but we are facilitating a kind of platform from the library as a publisher. We are supporting them and providing a platform to get their publish the research work from the library. So I'm going to say this exciting journey. Probably I'm sure this kind of uh, practice, this kind of services may be meaningful and useful for your libraries also. And I'm happy to, you know, I'm open. End of the session, we'll have a discussion, question session, and willing to more learn from you people. And <clears throat> let's hope next 30 minutes will be full of learning. So now allow me to share my screen now. Sangeeta, ma'am, can you confirm is it visible or not? It is visible. Uh, since you, if you can just can put it in the, you know, in our slideshow, yes. Perfect. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you very, very much, much. and everything. Now, if you look at the topic, libraries and research support services, the emerging opportunities. Many of people will say, what mean of emerging? Because libraries as in part and parcel of that research. Yes. But you look at the how this in different kind of opportunities are waiting for us. How we can use the different kind of tools and technologies to support research more meaningful. So this is an outline of the presentation. I'm going to touch a few important points. First and foremost, why we should research support services from the library, why libraries should involve in promoting research, writing research, publishing research. How should I plan the research support services from the library and the important services for the uh, you know supporting research? Libraries, librarians, the research instructions program, how we can start the different kind of research uh, skills programs and promotion of library research activity through different events and all. So first and foremost, why should we initiate research support? And foremost is that if you look at the every institution, whether it's the research institution or that higher education, university, college, everyone is nowadays participating in the different accreditations, ranking, and if we librarian really will meaningfully want to contribute, not to only support from the library, but we librarian have to be part of that, you know, institution building. We need to build in a, we should be part and parcel of the leadership of the institution. And we have to support an institution and we need to support institution in achieve, to achieve that go, vision and mission of the institution. And if you look at any vision and mission of any institution, then 90 to 95% or 100% institution want to be, become a center for excellence in terms of the research and 
academic and every institution is supposed to go with the ranking and accreditation so if you look at the ranking and accreditation framework with the, from the different agencies i was just, i'm very curious and you know used to uh, have a different kind of benchmarking my habit and hobby is to explore and to understand global practices what sangeeta is also told uh, during my introductions so i was curious to understand why this few institution globally always always five or ten institution in the list of this time higher education ranking or the skewers ranking so i was looking this you know times higher education ranking portal and just looking at how this you know kind of ranking parameters ranking gradations weightage and all so each and every institution ranking framework ranking institutions ranking agencies accreditation agencies they are giving a much weightage to the research any of ranking institution look at the times higher education here in this screen again look at the nir of this indian ranking system again if you look at the weightage parameter that that research and professional practices are having a highest weightage then look at the nac every institution in this country college universities research institution has to uh, accredit themselves through the nac and nac is one of the uh, central agencies where they used to accredit institution for academic excellence or the research and if you look at here in this ranking parameters they have different curriculum expect teaching learning research innovation infra student support governance institution value and all they have now look at the 150 200 but research is again highest it is 250 so libraries and librarians should involve they themselves with the authority of the institution leader of the institution and should support to get a maximum weightage to maximum you know this weightage we should contribute and support to the institutions therefore we should how to have a kind of services which can support which can enhance the research activity in the our campuses so i was very curious not only look at the uh, ranking framework parameters and weightages but also looking at these different portals of this top ranked institution in this worldwide harvard institution cambridge and some oxford mits sydney so i have gone through their library portals and uh, just trying to understand what kind of services they used to provide for the library to enhance their research activity so if look you people can explore the different portal of this institution and you will find over there that there each and every institution is providing research support services but what kind of services they are offering this is again important to understand because if i would like to start all services from my institution it is not physical and practical until and unless as a librarian my me myself is not updated to myself is not skilled to support that kind of services so based on this all parameter this all practices of good good institutions and again we are just got in some literature recently as i was really going through this paper research paper this has paper published in emerald in 2019 on research support and i was exploring that you know there was some investigation and analysis of research support services in academic institution during this study they have looked at the top 100 universities according to qos rank globally and about 76 libraries they have had in sample data and i was just looking the findings if you look at the finding the research support services can be generally divided in seven steps research data management open access publishing scholarly publishing research impact measurement that means the research metrics research guides and research consultation research tools and uh, kind of uh, techniques they can support this kind of you look at this this, this kind of you know things you know giving giving given me a kind of broad understanding and when when i started research support services at my institution then again i need to uh, understand the whole research process and if you look at the research process research life cycle there is a we have designed 4p 4p which connecting the library to the research community and different 
part of the research process, research cycles. Look at here. First P, when somebody is going to register to in PhD program at a university, so we are connecting them. Every student, every scholar has to come to the library, have to register themselves and having a detailed discussion with the library. And when they are when they are in process for identifying research problems, literatures, and hypothesis, we used to talk about the first P plan. Second P is that perform. Third P is publish. Fourth P is preserve. So library can connect all four P's at the different level, different stages, providing a different set of services. Let me take in more. And based on this four P, we have designed our own research support framework. Now I'm going to discuss research from research uh, framework. This is the research support uh, services conceptual framework developed by us. All four P is here. So when we're going to start with the master student research scholars, we we are connecting all four P's here. These are the research process. Research process means all different stages of the research we are connecting from the library. When they are planning library uh, the research, we are helping them. We are providing the bibliometric services from the library. We library team is you know extracting different kind of data research data from Scopus or other databases and analyzing using the bibliometric techniques and giving an overview to the scholar what kind of research has been done globally the, on that particular domain where research scholar is going to explore so that they can understand what kind of research work has been done and what where that he or she can start their own research they can identify research gap they can we are not only providing that uh, you know research data we are, we are providing a 200 research publications based on the citations we are telling them the top 20 journals based on the impact factor we are telling them top 50 scholar scientists who are working in this field globally and publishing more we are telling them the name of the institution affiliation the institution they are more in research on that particular domain so that a research scholar in first stage can get an idea idea about the domain where he or she is going to explore that how and what kind of research has been done previously who is doing where is doing so this is a very important step second step perform when they're going to start research we are not only providing the statistical data but helping them to download the research data publications organize their research publication and creating their personal library in using Mendeley. And then we are telling them how to use Mendeley, how to do literature review by using a Mendeley and how they can manage the citation automatically and they can change citation style within a click or so, all features we are explaining them. And third stage is the publishing when their, their manuscript is ready or their thesis is ready how they should prepare the thesis, how they should prepare a manuscript, and telling them how they can publish the research, where they can publish the research impactfully, how to find out the right journal for them. So all we are conducting a lot of author workshop for them. We are creating a kind of awareness through different session about research ethics and misconduct and also given a kind of guideline about the research at the national level, level UGC or other ministries. And finally, when the research publication is published, we are taking care of their publication and managing their publication our institutional repository for long-term preservation and access. So that after 20, year, 20 years or so, the same research scholar can explore and can look at their publication without going here and there. And finally, Finally, libraries again supporting not only to the research community, not to that, not only that you know PhD programs and all master programs, but also supporting to the administration, the star office or the IQSC office, 
for the different ranking because we in library is taking care of all new publication research data and not only the data but providing the different research metrics many scholars and faculty they are providing a, going to apply for a different research projects we are providing the different data to them for their applications so these are the value addition services from the library so in case library is involved in this kind of services personally individually attention certainly library people will willing to meet and interact with the library people more and more so library resources library space library infra will be utilized meaningfully second is that not only we are providing the research support services from the library but library is also introduce a research skills course program for the phd scholar and look at this is the course curriculum for the phd scholar at the bennett university I'm a member of Academic Council Main University and proposed this particular paper in the year of 2000, 2000, uh, yeah, uh, 2018 UGC has introduced this program, but when it university started this program in 2017. This is a one credit program approved by Academic Council. Each and every scholar across schools, different schools, has to register themselves has to attend and qualify this paper. Otherwise, he or she cannot pursue their PhD in the Bennett University. If we look at the module, different module of the, you know, this program, library is not only providing research support from the you know, library, but library, library is going in the classroom to interact, attract, interact with the PhD scholar and delivering this kind of class uh, sessions in the classroom. And this is the essential mandatory for them. So first module talking about research literature, literature search strategy and research techniques, where we are just not only telling them, but showing practically how you people can plan, identify the research problem, how you people can have a, your research question, formulate research question, how you people can have your keywords from your, you know, research topics, and how the different kind of research techniques from different databases, how they can extract the data from there. Then again, telling them different literature, review, uh, literature review and reference management tool like a mental aid. Then again, research ethics and academic integrity, publishing life, uh, research publishing cycle, research measurement, productivity and visibility. And sixth module I recently added, that is the research data management. So after going through all these uh, six module, a scholar having a broad understanding about the research domain or around research. So he or she can understand all important aspect and essential research skills for the research. These are the research support for the library we have highlighted here. And I told you that we have created a digital repository service at the Vanity University, whole publication. So as on date, we have 1537 publication and uh, 1228 is already been uploaded in the repository and the rest will upload soon so scholars and faculty members will able to upload the publication their own we have initiated this you uh, implement earnest program uh, where that uh, all the research data is available here then more important nowadays every research every librarian whether it's a research institution whether it's an academic or the scholars they must understand and frame and develop their you know subject portal very what they can do here they have to map the library resources with the faculty profile they have to map the library resources with the teaching curriculum so that users can utilize those resources without wasting their time here and there look at here this is the subject portal still is in our development and we have we have curated collected and organized library resources connected here with this portal so that user is not really required to uh, explore those resources on different uh, sources. I'll, 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 if time permit, I'll show you practically. Then research data management. When I'm in classroom and interacting with the research scholar, my first assignment for the RDM is to every research scholar should have to have their account on Publom, ResearchGate, Orchid, and research data management repository so that they can understand the value of research data. They, they are, they are well-known 
they, they are the responsible to understand and can preserve the research data. Nowadays, there's a current trend is, is there no open science, open data, open repository. That means all research available, you know, all research output should be available and accessible with the uh, public domain uh, in the public domain. And uh, most of funding agencies nowadays they are uh, they are they are giving a kind of guideline to the scholar that whatever research output that should be available in public domain. So, and uh, though we are encouraging all uh, you know research scholar to create their account and whatever research data they are going to curate and collect during the research process, they should understand it. And if in case they feel and found that their, their research data has a value they can upload the research data because the research data is an equal important than your like your publication the way we are citing public research papers we can cite the research data and research data in case that there is a number of publishers they are not only publishing a research paper but they have started publishing research data research data has an equal value and importance and giving more visibility of the research so that other community can utilize those research and in that way the global community can uh, do more uh, research uh, meaningfully we are uh, you know having a, this kind of library newsletter electro e newsletter uh, newsletter and providing different uh, set of uh, research uh, information through this uh, com research uh, newsletters this is very important for uh, you know to understand we are compiling the whole view research publication in form of the research compendium annually we are going to do it we are not only we are compiling bio research publication up to the abstract level in this form of the research compendium and also providing them the research matrix so ideas to compile this uh, uh, research compendium so that community can get they can expose they can explore and they can compete with each other and in case i publish 10 paper this year i'm an prolific author and i, I uh, we are recommending them for an appreciation certificate from the authority so other people can have a similar kind of motivation we should we should pardon we should involve ourselves with the research we should write more we should publish more we are also promoting the research activity through the uh, events. So I told you that we had a number of activities throughout the, throughout the year, having a different kind of research, writing, publishing workshop, author workshop for the community, so that they can expose, they can interact with the, uh, the editorial board, they can, they can understand, and we are conducting different kind of quiz for the research college student based on the available library resources and the winner is getting excited you know different kind of goodies so idea is to expose library resources so that they can utilize those resources they can understand what are the resources available over here this is the uh, there is more than more than uh, so look at this this workshop 1300 participating uh, people participated from different countries globally so this was in a uh, workshop on research, essential research uh, writing and publishing. So this kind of event is really adding, adding value and enhancing the research. Recently, this, this year we have conducted literature, a library literature festival in name of Alek. And Alek is, what is the meaning of Alek? Alek is power of ink. Here we have uh, facilitated uh, more than 22 uh, author from Vanity University who published their book and few students they published the book and just to increase them and kind of create an, a you know develop a kind of culture is uh, writing culture and publishing culture so that we have in invited different you know eminent speakers minister for the minister was here dr Kiran Bedi many eminent you know author from the corporate sector they came and interacted with the student and there was a two-day program and we have libraries started in a one national award name of alek samman alek samman this this time we have given this award to uh, nishing sap dr ramesh pokhal nishing ji the former education minister 
This is the research progress at the Bennett University in short span of time. Last six years only, we have 43 uh, H index of the university. If you, I did some benchmark and found we are far, far better than many of, uh, you know, 10 year or 15 year old organization. So in that way, we are doing uh, reasonably good in terms of research. So libraries involved uh, with the research support from the library as, and library and also going in the classroom to have a promotion of the more and more research writing and publishing. My idea to initiate the research uh, skills program, this course, uh, is to, uh, you know, uh, minimize the uh, PhD, research PhD, uh, PhD uh, duration. Generally, research, one scholar is taking three to four years for one PhD program. Idea was to reduce their time span from three year to two and a half year, or at least I want to wanted to have save at least minimum six months uh, for the of the research scholar so that they can con directly concentrate on their meaningful research. They should not waste their time and energy to find out and curate and organize those resources from different sources. So idea is just to save their time and energy and to bring them more closer with the libraries and librarian. So uh, this was a short story of the like Bennett University. In case you want to start uh, the research support services from your library, there's some lesson. First and foremost, we need to identify what kind of services you're going to support. You should have to have your own research framework for your organization based on the available resources, infrastructures. Secondly, library should be part and partial and uh, should collaborate with academia and the research community just to understand them, to, to know the expectation. So accordingly, we should we should uh, plan our services. We should have a tailored or personalized service to the community. We should, uh, every library should introduce the research skills program to give a kind of uh, overview about the research uh, tools, techniques, so the scholar can do more meaningful research, more impactful research. And major concern is nowadays, we are talking too much we are doing so many things, but actually, while we're going to implement things, is are getting a, uh, a lot of efforts and sometimes people are not able to success. There's a two kind of approach I, I realized. One is that uh, bottom to top, another is a top to bottom. So we uh, we used a uh, top to bottom approach. We have discussed with the authority. We have discussed with the academic council of the institution. We have discussed with the different schools and based on their understanding and, you know, we had a, we started this kind of research skills program and research support services from the library. So thank you very much. Now floor is open for a discussion. Thank you very much, Sangeeta. Thank you so very much, uh, Professor Dr. Sanjay. What an excellent, extraordinary talk you know that you have delivered. And I must say, and each one of us who have listened to you. Uh, you know, would fully agree with me that it's not only that the most impactful talk uh, that you have delivered this afternoon, you are doing an uh, extraordinary and exemplary and most the uh, the commendable work, uh, you know, that you are leading in at Bennett University. We being the library and information science professional feel so very proud of you because you have it's, it's through the work that you have demonstrated that how we as a library professionals, as a library team can enrich this entire environment of research and innovation. We have never ever come across, uh, I think you know, it has taken a lot much of time, uh, uh, Sanjay, to discover, to know that this is the, the most inspiring and the most impactful work that you are doing at Bennett University. You are a trendsetter you know, for the libraries and for the library professionals. And we greatly salute your spirits. We greatly appreciate and value and admire the, the most, uh, the, as you have rightly said, you know, it's planning out is one work, uh, one kind of a thing, but, you know, fully implementing it, making it as the most inspiring and a success story and that strong will and desire that yes it's doable it can be done by the libraries it can be done by the library teams you know and the libraries has to show and has to lead and the kind of a work that you are doing i think it's not only in india there this is the thing that what many of the even the best of the libraries would really would be wanting you know to emulate and to follow you what you are doing you know at bennett university it has truly been an eye-opener, uh, I must say that, uh, and uh, 
and uh, there would be you have truly inspired and energized everyone each one of uh, we the library and information science professionals that yes we have to empower you know, our institutions, we have to empower our researchers and our scholarly committee. And it is something which we have, we do possess those skill sets. We do possess you know, that kind of a desire and will and can be done. You have in a, such an extraordinary way have informed us all about it. And even these four P of the, you know, this research life cycle that you have uh, today deliberated on and showing that how at every step of that life cycle, the contribution that the library is making is a library which is uh, leading the way. It is a library which is supplementing and coming to the rescue of the researchers and scholars. And even some of the things that you have said, like for planning out a research, and that's, uh, you know, what is being done globally at the you know the best of the universities uh, even that is you know to make them aware what is globally being done you know then try to uh, address those gap areas and then to work on those gap areas and you being in the library and you're spearheading you know all that and telling them about it it's really really something the most inspiring thing even for uh, the publishing uh you know the content and that there has been, you know, I, you know, uh, the, even in the institutions, as you have rightly pointed it out, also for the publications, as you have hinted, you know, the H index of the Bennett University, it all has been made possible because of this, you know, extraordinary work that you are undertaking uh, in the library. Thank you so very much, uh, Sanjay. It, uh, I, to tell you very honestly, I was really not knowing that this is what exactly you are doing now you hold such a great experience and expertise and we have been you know knowing uh, for years altogether, for decades altogether. but i think you are someone who is so very unique in uh, getting this fully you know it, you, you have implemented you are showing the way you are inspiring others come if i have done it why can't you you know come forward and do this so thank you so very much sanjay we greatly admire appreciate always and greatly have valued your immense contributions the professional and you are bringing the glory you are bringing you know the glory to the name of the profession and we really feel so very proud of it and it's really indeed has been an honor listening to you to the extraordinary work that you are undertaking at bennett university and uh, and you you are really indeed we are very really happy about it that uh, and very very happy that we have chosen this topic uh, when we have been deliberating and this is for all our attendees you know we had deliberations myself and sanjay we were talking about it what to speak you know what is it because he holds authority on not many of the things and uh, and i'm really feeling blessed that we have been able to get into this conversation that let's talk about libraries and research support and uh, and the role that the libraries but i wasn't really knowing that this is what it's going to get unfolded into and you are practically it's not something that you are just speaking you know it's something which comes you know from your dedicated efforts that you are already doing it thank you so very much sanjay much grateful and uh, on behalf of Janet and behalf of each one of us i'm pretty confident that many of our attendees you know they are already fully being charged they are fully being inspired by you with your such an impactful and enriching talk this afternoon we are making the floor open for questions and with your permission sanjay another 10 minutes of your time yeah, i know yeah, that you're engaged yeah, with not many of our your activities so I would like to request our uh, just, you know, attendees over here today, our professional colleagues who have joined us, not only from India, from many nooks and parts of the world. Please do kindly come forward, raise your digital hand. I'm sifting through, you are, you can also, you're most welcome if you want to pose any question, uh, uh, you can do that. And I would just be now going through the list of attendees, raise your digital hand if you may like to ask any question the talk by uh, uh, Sanjiji was, yeah, let me just go. We have Mr. Dudal Ra Rajeshwar, who has joined us from Hyderabad. And uh, Mr. Dudal Rajeshwar, could you please unmute yourself? I have unmuted you. This is for you, yes, Mr. Madam. Dudal Rajeshwar. Yes. Yes, madam. Is it audible, madam? OK, yes, thank you, madam. Audible. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very inspiring, this uh, talk. Very good session, sir. Actually, we learn a lot of things through your entire presentation. Sir, actually, I have three doubts, sir. Are you involving the supervisors of the PhD uh, students uh, in this program? 
or uh, same type of that rss research support servicing what you are providing uh, in the same uh, that is uh, methodology is incorporated in india sir any university any i did not know uh, who is uh, availing this facility the students research scholars what uh, availing this facility mm -hmm. research uh, support services any report is available sir like that how many students are uh utilize it, this facility and i, I request you uh, personally uh, you are you are uh, uh, i request you to personally sir please uh, can you make us to uh, incorporate in our libraries uh, this kind of service yeah thank you dr rajesh this is a good question and uh, let me tell you indian library new age librarian they already have started a few things from the libraries Okay, many of institutions, premier institutions, they have started. But uh, I am a Commonwealth professional fellow who has visited a different part of the world, uh, top-notch institution, interacted with the library directors over there, Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard, MIT, and all. So I was just trying uh, understanding their practices and taking cue from them, and I uh, implemented many of things at my university. So in case you want to, uh, let me tell you about Library Bennett first. 2017, I was interacting with the Vice Chancellor and I taught because uh, your library used to manage publication data and talking about research metrics. And then I was given an opportunity to speak uh, in front of the whole faculty and uh, tell that the progress of research and uh, about citation, metrics, and all something. That was the first time, and I was discussing with Vice Chancellor. And then he told, "Why not you start something? Because keep let uh, let keep that you know update all the fraternity about the research publication." And especially that uh, when, I went at all, when I was talking about prolific authors and contribution and, uh, you know, we arranged the publication based on citation, based on that impact factor, prolific author, then that let us begin a competition, a kind of creative competitive environment in the library, uh, through library in the institution. So let people understand uh, about their work, first and foremost. That was, you know, the first uh, suggestion from authority. Then. Then I told sir, we can suggest uh, we can take some best practices of different institution, global institutions, and can apply if you permit. Then suddenly, then I did some exercise. I have gone through top ten uh, institution according to high times higher education ranking. I shown the portals. Then according to their portal, I have just made a kind of report and how and what kind of services they are offering for promotion of the research and how library team is involved. Then I was looking at my team and myself. There's many things that was quite new for us. And before proposing, we equipped ourselves first. We equipped ourselves first. We learned a lot of things. We have gone through literature. We have gone through workshop trainings and equipped our team in such a way so that we can we are in a position to offer that kind of services to the fraternity. Because if library library team they themselves are not capable and not in position to discuss and support community, then no one will come to you. This is our first question. Second is that then it was not enough to provide in a research support services. Then I suggested why not we can plan in a one credit mandatory course for the PhD scholar. Let each and every scholar who is going to register with the Benedict University has to go through my course, has to qualify this exam. And whether they want or don't want, they have to attend all lectures. They have to do all exercise what I'm giving to them after classes. They have to pass my paper. Otherwise, in case they're not able to qualify my paper, they cannot pursue their PhD here. Now, this is a scenario. There is an around 150 research scholars in this university. Every research scholar is well connected to me. They were in my class. They are coming to the library and they do the meeting and interacting with each other. And the way sometimes they said, we are meeting more often to you than your research supervisor. So, if you look at their public thesis, they have given a kind of acknowledgement to the librarian librarian. So, that was a great achievement to, uh, for the library. And then slowly, gradually, then we have interacted with the young scholar faculty. We started an author workshop. We are invited to the editorial board. And then we are going to start in this, uh, what is it, author services. So, idea is to somehow to, you know, achieve more and more in research. 250 for a NAC accreditation, we want to, to uh, earn 250 only. That is the maximum it is. And so that institution authority can realize the importance of library. Library is not an investment center. Library is more productive, 
more meaningful so that that, that uh, we have initiated a number of services other services and if you visit my institution you will not uh, find my library less than any of uh, any of top institution in term of design in term of infra in term of interior or services so in case you want to serve uh, you can connect me i'm happy to support you Thank you so, so very much, Sanjay, yet again, and uh, for a very, very impressive reply and also the impressive work that you are doing. Let me now uh, requesting uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar Kenthola, the librarian at NIT University, Neemrana. Vinay, we are connected right now. Would you like to ask a question to Professor Sanjay? This is for you, Dr. Vinay. Dr. Vinay Kumar Kenthola, Vinay, we are connected right now. Uh, Vinay, it seems that I have given you an audio control. You are connected. Maybe I think if you may just kindly try to do once again and check your audio device because we had given you a connect, but it seems. Uh, this is to tell it to our colleagues uh, who have uh, you know, put in their question in the chat box. We are going to take it shortly. Uh, let me just be through. Firstly, those who have desired to ask a question in the uh, in the verbal mode. This is for Dr. Natrajan K. Dr. Natrajan K. Um, yes, we are connected, Dr. Natrajan. Hi, good afternoon, sir. I am Natrajan. How are you, sir? We will yeah, meet. Fine. Thank you. Uh, we will meet 15 years back at Karunia University, Coimbatore. Oh yeah, yeah. At yeah. Karunia yeah. University. Uh, okay, sir. I have three points, sir. Sir, what is the universal plagiarism percentage similarity text to percentage? Permissible. Are you able to hear, sir? This is a note as that's a standard guidance globally. Uh, in India, if you look at the guideline from the UGC, they're talking about less than 10, up to 10, or then I give another you know, guideline in case plagiarism in 10 to 20 or 30, uh, 40 to 60. There are different kind of guidelines is there. But I used to, when I'm talking and talking with the research community scholars, I say that oh, you forget about the plagiarism and the guide, guideline. You sincerely do your work ethically. You do practically, you do your own work. And then you, once you are going doing everything systematically, ethically, forget about the, you know, all this uh, plagiarism and the tool and all. Because once you're going, going to do your own work, your own data, real-time data, and upload that to your publication, hardly you will get any kind of. And there is an, uh, some other, other part, there is some misconception also related to plagiarism. That there, uh, there is a common words they're catching that about the different softwares, the work under the tunnel. Okay, sir. Unfortunately, most of institution uh, research cell uh, or that uh, you know research supervisor, they are not looking the report carefully not going they are looking the percentage That's the so in my opinion the 10 under 10 percent there can be plagiarism or 40 percent cannot be plagiarized okay. again is a matter of the investigation fortunately i'm a part of that academic integrity panel at the school level departmental level as well as the university level so i'm in class and checking each and every report very carefully telling them and then scholar can argue with that you know system no, this is not plagiarism. We understand plagiarism. What is plagiarism? Okay. Sir. So now one more. Sir. We we are rather than fo focusing the percentage. We should encourage and you know think about the noble work, their own work, work which should be work should uh, along with the uh, ethics. Universities they are fixed for the plagiarism percentage for submitting the research articles like uh, thesis. They are talking in look at an Indian guideline, the UGC, the 10 percent, less than 10 percent. Majority okay. they are looking in that way. But different publisher, globally publisher, even they are not, they are considering more than 10 percent. Okay, sir. Okay. Globally publisher, well known publisher. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Natrajan. Not thank more. you, Dr. Sanjay. Many more are waiting right now. So uh, please kindly do excuse because we have a large number of other attendees also who are really wanting. So one question, you know, if we can keep it, we would appreciate that because uh, we could also notice uh, because uh, Professor Sanjay also has some commitments, you know, for this evening. Uh, he's there at the university, has been able to spare time for being with, there with us. I'm requesting now Mr. Mahinder Kumar Sahu. Mr. Mahinder Kumar Sahu, could you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Uh, 
This is for Mr. Mahinder Kumar Sahu. Could you please unmute yourself? I have unmuted you from this end. Yes, we are connected, Mahinder. Uh, good, good evening, madam. Uh, good evening, Sanjay sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Mahinder Kumar Sahu, working at uh, MDI Murshidabad campus. Sir, I have one small doubt. Uh, as you told that uh, whatever the publication made by your faculty member, you are going to archive in your repository. So is it legal that uh, every article uh, is archived in your repository? Uh, in case you are an online, you can see the LRC drs.bennett.edu.in. And if you look at the publication available in DRS and public domain, that is available up to abstract level. In case someone want to you know look at the full text, they have to connect to the repository administrative. Administrative. So, so, so sir, my question is that we can uh, we can archive the abstract level up to abstract level, no, sir. The abstract up to abstract level that is available in public domain. You can even the visit and publisher website. You can see that any publication up to the abstract level. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. For the full text, yes, definitely would not be a possible, Dr. Mahinder. In the open domain, you can't do it because that's conflicting then with the, you know, with the publisher. So that cannot be. But till the abstract level, then as Dr. Sanjay has said, that's being available. And then if someone, you know, you know the author, one can. Even if you look at a fair use of that policy under Copyright Act, that that in case that is also allowing people to use the, for their personal research or academic rather than exactly. copyright and violation of copyright. That means someone is you know utilizing commercially and different purposes. You know, yes, thank you very much. And uh, so now we would like to just move ahead and see. Uh, just requesting this is for Mageshwari way Mageshwari we are not able to see any audio device connected with your connection so you may like to log out and log in again because we can't give you an audio control uh, as there is no audio device I'm quickly while speaking to you sifting through the entire list to see who else before we take the questions which are already being posted in the chat box uh, we have uh, Mr. Ramesh Mahadeo Margane who may like to ask a question in the audio mode Mr. Ramesh Mahadeo Margane could you please unmute yourself so another five minutes we won't really want to further intrude into the time uh, Mr. Ramesh Mahadeo Margane could you please quickly unmute yourself Yes, we are connected. Go ahead and ask your question, Mahesh, quickly. This is Mr. Ramesh Mahadeo Margane. I think, uh, no, maybe by mistakenly, he has raised his digital hand. Uh, I'm just quickly about to, we are through. Uh, this is for Mr. Sachin Shende. If you don't have an audio device attached, which we can connect you with, so we, we are not able to. This is Sarsati Guda. Sarsati Guda, I have unmuted you. Could you please unmute yourself and ask your question? This is for Saraswati Guda. Could you please unmute yourself and ask your question? I'm extremely sorry. I can't really wait this longer. We have to go because there are, I'm knowing it that there are a couple of questions which are already being posted in the chat box. So I would be moving from here and uh, would like to uh, inform Dr. Vinay if he may like to post his question because we have not been able to. This is for Dr. Vikas Prajapat. Dr. Vikas Prajapat, could you please unmute yourself? Dr. Vikas Prajapat, could you please unmute yourself? If you're not able to do it, I'm compelled to mute you from here and quickly would like to. This is for Vital Rathor. Uh, this is for Mr. Vitthal Rathor. Mr. Vitthal Rathor, could you please unmute yourself? Vitthal Rathor, could you please unmute yourself? No, you are not able to. We are through with this. We are, Sanjay, another five minutes, maximum five minutes, not more than that. No, no, you take and your time. Not worry, not worry. Yeah, just not five worry. minutes more, yes. Uh, this is uh, for Dr. Vinay Kumar Kenthola. Dr. Vinay, could you please try? Uh, yeah. Uh, Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, very much, Vinay. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it, uh, it's not a question, but uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, ma'am, and uh, uh, thanks, Dr. Sanjay Kataria, because actually, uh, because he's a uh, aspiration for lots of uh, young lawyers, even uh, for 
people like me same age and uh, because he has done lots of work and uh, i still uh, uh, recall my meeting with him at jp when he was he informed me about the research course work that was you know later on implemented by and forced edc to implement the universities because otherwise universities were not implementing that course so that that so i still remember that because uh, we librarian should be like him that he realize what is going to happen so uh, first of all i would like to uh, thanks you and uh, second thing i would like to add one thing because you talked about the research data management so you uh, uh, just informed about lots of website so i would like to uh, mention here that there is a uh, our own website that is uh, by the uc internet that is called the so chakra so that so chakra is very helpful we are in the process and very soon we will be implementing this uh, you know so chakra at nit university nimrana so it's a very interactive uh, you know uh, portal and, and uh, it provides helps to the researcher guide and the most of important point is that you can store you can organize and you can manage your research data your data is there so uh, i think we must also you know uh, use uh, the so chakra platform it's a very useful uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity ma'am thank you dr sanjay thank your you. lecture was thank your you. talk was very impressive very thank you thank you uh, dr vinay uh, sanjay would you like to say something about this uh, portal show chakra yeah show chakra is a very uh, excellent initiative by ugc infinet and certainly going to add value what dr vinay said but provided that uh, that still that people are uh, uh, not much aware about the initiative they should have more uh, activities uh, more orientation active plan uh, throughout the country or that or that uh, kind of ugc should take any kind of initiative that every institution in this country should be part and parcel of that you know act, uh, initiative this like a, like a uh, south ganga so in that way people probably uh, will have, will implement it in the respect institutions Shod Chakra is basically 2012. There is in a one. Uh, uh, the 2012, I was in a Middlesex University UK in Commonwealth Fellow, and the I visited in a University of East London those day, and I found there is a software known as Lab uh, PSD Manager. The PSD Manager, the kind of software, which which was supporting end to end. End to end means then one starting from the scholar registration. PhD score registration, all uh, research progress online, all that kind of uh, DRS or uh, report, reports, progress reports are available online. Every research review report is online. Even though thesis submission is online, the review and PhD evaluation, thesis evaluation is online, and uh, report is online. Even though till uh, you know a part of the degree, everything is online, very system systematized. Now. What he said that they have added in one feature that a scholar can upload the raw research data. That is very important, good initiative. And if you look at an, I just used to talk about research data management. We have a thoroughly one uh, systematic program here, and uh, I'm not only teaching them what exactly the research data management, what are the type of the research data, why we should manage the research data, what is the fair principle of Euro European Commission related to research data management. So there is many things we used to talk, but practically, I'm insisting each and every research scholar to create an, any of your your interest, any of research data repository. Uh, you create your account and upload a sample data. Be part and part participate on those repository, so that you will have a kind of understanding what kind of data is available, how your data can be make an impact of your research. So this can, this is basically idea. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Just a quick two questions because, you know, we are, I, I'm our sincere apologies to our attendees because of positive. We can't really, you know, though we really wish to get more and more get benefited, you know, the more we interact with Professor Sanjay, the more each one of us are, are getting inspired to really take on the research support services in our libraries. And everyone wants to replicate, uh, you know, the model which so impressively has been demonstrated by Professor Sanjay, what he has already achieved in doing it. Two quick questions uh, for you, Sanjay. One is from Mrs. Manju Dubey, who is wanting to know, sir, in your opinion, how AI tools like ChatGPT are going to influence research support services provided by libraries? And the second one is coming from Saurabh Gupta, who is wanting 
to know other besides Mendeley, is there any other open source software that you can recommend for uh, you know, literature uh, uh, open source reference management tool? So two quick questions. Number one, what AI tools like ChatGPT can do for research support? And second one is about this uh, reference management tools other than Mendeley. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a both as a uh, question. If you look at a uh, chat GPT, I'm not going to talk particularly and still I'm the user of chat GTP. And every day probably somewhere somehow I'm using it. I'm using it not just put in copy and paste. I'm taking in queue and ideas how they're presenting some topics. What kind of thought there, you know, that kind of content is there. In case you're in short of time and you are not well connected with the literature and you want to know, understand something, better to put in your all question together, you'll get a fantastic answer. But I'm not encouraging anyone to go and copy and paste and put in your academic assignment. But whatever, there's a lot of AI tools available. I was talking yesterday. The, uh, with my research scholar and should be available here in the, uh, by, uh, the screen only. Uh, there is in a portal apart from the this chat GPT where uh, you just upload any research paper. This that portal will help you how to review literature, review that paper. Uh, that should be here somewhere. Uh, see a general finder. Or uh, give me one minute. Yeah, sure, please. Yesterday I was taking class. Is the my screen is visible? Yes, it's very much, very much. Sanjay. Yesterday I was taking this class. I think so. There should be somewhere in the hair only. Okay. This size, size space or size, some space. I can drop an URL to your. Actually, no, no, yes, yeah. One, you can one, do that. I'm, I'm, telling, I'm telling, I'm telling. Yeah, sure, please. I drop an URL. Uh, one minute, one minute only. Please. There is in a size space.com. You just uh, look at the size space.com. There is an AI to base tool. And the most interesting thing is that you just registered with that platform and uh, collect a few papers and upload one paper one by one. And uh, uh, you know, in case there's a paper 15 page, that tool pro platform will provide you a half page review of that particular paper. So that there is no mean to you know go through that 15 pages, just upload that and uh, read the review in case that paper you feel and found useful, you can include in your study or you can exclude. And we have identified more than 40, 50 platforms like this. SciSpace.com, right? SCI yes. space. SCI. -E -E, yes. -E -E I have com. also, yeah, I have Googled it in the meantime when you were speaking. So this is to tell to all our colleagues here today. We are just texting you uh, in your chat box. You will be able to see Sky Space. This is for science. SCI and space. S P A C E dot com. And this has gone to all the colleagues and requesting Sanju also to cross check this. This you would also be able to see. HTTPS colon double slash SCI space SPACE dot com. So thank you very much, Sanjay. And any take on this open source reference management tool other than Mendeley? See, this up to you. So how my, how much you are, you, how but, much person is you know comfortable and well versed about the platform? Though I'm yes. uh, using uh, this uh, Mendeley since long, I'm expert is on that. I'm promoting that only. Thank you very much. Yeah, but there are Zotero and others, so someone wants it, as being said. Thank you very much, Sanjay. We have really taken a lot much of your time. You have been so kind, gracious, always so supportive, no adequate words to express. But I must say that you have really, truly inspired you know, everyone with your such a dedicated, devoted work that you're doing, involving the new roles of libraries, showing them, telling them that, yes, we, the library and information science professionals, 
have to come forward to embrace these new roles, you know, to get into the new shoes and to take the profession forward and letting and uh, to contribute immensely to this entire research and innovation ecosystem to which now all the institutions are desiring to, you know, scale greater heights. You are setting it great examples. It has truly been a great honor and pleasure, Sanjay, to have you today with us. Thank you so much for the enormous support that you have been extending to Dellnet always. On behalf of Dellnet, we, 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 we have a pleasure of presenting, and I'm going to do this in person. I look forward, day after tomorrow, we are meeting, you know, for other engagements. So I'll make it sure that I carry this, you know, with me. I would like to get a big click, you know, at that moment, you know, to present. And this is not only from only Delnet, but from each one of us who have truly got, you know, so benefited, you know, with your enormous work. We greatly, greatly admire and uh, greatly appreciate, you know, the work that you are setting in Sanjay, and you are uh, indeed, indeed. Thank uh, setting much. great standards thank in the profession. Thank you. We thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. All the colleagues, professional friends are here. Thank you very much for your patience and this time. And thank you, Dalnat, Sangeeta, for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Yeah, surely. Thank you so much, each one of you. It has truly been a pleasure, you know, having each one of uh, you with us this afternoon. You always inspired us, but that yesterday we had Dr. Sanjay Kataria with us, who had truly, truly made each one of us to, you know, start thinking now, you know, how can we bring in this research support and we become the enablers, you know, of that being in the libraries and libraries coming forward, we as a library professionals, coming you know forward in embracing these new roles thank you so very much in being there and this is also to tell you our next webinar and yes that would be in person and in hybrid mode we would be doing 11th of may is the national technology day we really look forward to coming back on 11th may in organizing yet another session for you and this will be held in the hybrid mode and we will keep you posted about it thank you so very much for being there another one hour's time you are going to receive you know the certificates of appreciation participation in today's webinar and we have truly truly you know appreciated the presence, the most engaging presence of each one of you, and we remain much grateful. My very special thanks to my own colleague, uh, Mr. Kushal Goswami, who is taking care of our webinars at Delnet. Thank you so much. You, you keep on inspiring us so that we can keep and stay connected in all the time. Thank you very much, Sanjay. We can't really thank you enough. Thank you so much for making it possible for us to have you. Thank you very much. God you. bless you and you and your team. May you keep on, you know, making a difference. Such a significant, such a massive difference that you're making. And you are indeed, there would be many, many followers. You are getting into, you know, you are uh, into, the, into the roads which are less ventured, which have not been ventured, you know, much unventured land you have been, and there would be many followers now. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you very much, each one of you. God bless you all. And we really look forward to coming back again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you the after. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Thanks.